Hello everybody, one more time. My name is Alex Centeno with Mercados Interactive Partners. And in this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at how to take your traditional images taken with an iPhone or with any smartphone uh, or a handheld camera uh, and take them to the next level, make them shine, make them fantastic. Uh, so make them as professional as they can get. Uh, sometimes there's a misperception that in order to get really good photos, you're going to need a professional level camera. And I, first of all, I don't want to say that a professional camera is not going to improve your results, but, um, but also you can make your iPhone photos look fantastic and that's what we're going to be taking a look today. Uh, but before we do, let's take a look at our sponsor for today. So our sponsor for today, of course, is Mercals.com. Uh, Mercados' focus is to help businesses of all sizes make more money uh, through the use of a strategic website design, custom digital media development, and web marketing. For more information, you can contact us at 888-525-8117 or visit us on the web at Mercados.com. Again, that phone number is 888-525-8117. We're located in the Research Triangle area in North Carolina. Great stuff. All right, and so the workflow that we're going to be taking a look at today is basically this six steps right here, which is correcting the white and black, getting rid of some problem areas on your photos, changing to lab color uh, so that we can reduce the noise, contrast, and sharpening uh, in lightness channel. Then we're going to increase the, the color uh, in A and B channels, and again, don't don't get too um, scared just yet. We're gonna be looking at this very very easily, and then uh, we're gonna go back to the RGB color scope to apply burn and dodge in certain areas of our images, and finally apply some filters and vignettes. So we're we're doing a lot in very little amount of time. So let's get to it. Uh, so let me get rid of this, and so here I have. An image in Photoshop. Uh, what I'm using here is my uh, tools palette on the left. I have my histograms here to the right just to show the different range or use of range in the image and uh, and then my layers here. So we're going to be using that and we're going to be using our channels as well. So just just be aware of, of those panels. If you don't know how to get them then you can always go to uh, window and you can select the ones that you're going to be needing. So, uh, for example, if you need the channels, then you can just select channels and so forth. Great. So those are the things that we're going to be using today. I have two images that we're going to be taking a look and these are really not attractive images that we're taking with a regular iPhone. And so that's what we're going to be using. So, uh, so that you feel more encouraged not to go and buy a $5,000 camera today. All right, we're going to jump right in. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is color correct for black and white points. Usually this, get rid, this, this gets rid of color casts. So I'm going to press Command M. This brings the curves panel. And you can also uh, do it by going to Image Adjustments Curves. Uh, but it's easier to just do Command or Control on PC M for curves. And so here you're going to have three eyedroppers here at the bottom. So by using those eyedroppers, we're going to select first our black point eyedropper and select the darkest point of the image. Then the white to select the white point of our image. So let's go ahead and do this white. And then finally, the middle point here is the gray point, something that has to be gray. And there you go. And as you can see, it changed our composition of the different curves of colors and lightness. Uh, and that's pretty much it. As you can see, it got rid of like the little bit of a cast that had before. So the next thing we're going to do is select here our uh, spot healing brush tool to get rid of problem areas. I have a couple things here in the wall that I don't want. So by selecting our spot healing brush, we can get rid of those. So all I'm going to do in Photoshop CS6, you can set this to content aware. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on top and click on top of this two things to remove them and 
get rid of that as well. So that's taken care of. And of course you would do that with your images, just get rid of, getting rid of anything that you don't really like uh, to see in the image that you took. The next thing that we're going to do is change it to lab uh, color mode. So we're going to come here to image mode and change it to lab color. As you can see, our channels have changed now to a Linus channel and then an A and B channel. The A channel is green and red. Our B channel is blue and yellow. And so what we're going to do is go here to channels and we're going to see our different channels and we can transition by pressing command three, four, and five. Three would be our Linus channel, A channel, and then B channel. All right, and so we're going to be selecting our Linus channel. And the, what we're going to be doing here is, first of all, reducing our noise. So go to filter, noise, reduce noise, and making uh, adjustments depending on how noisy your image is. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at 8 of strength and removing the JPEG artifact because this was compressed as a JPEG. So it does have that artifact there. So I'm going to get rid of that noise first thing. Second thing is I'm going to increase the contrast of the overall image. So command M one more time to bring our curves. And then I'm going to do an S shape curve. Notice that I'm not doing too much, but it still is an S shaped curve. Then hit OK. And then finally, we're going to do some sharpening. So filter, sharpen, on sharp mask. Uh, and of course you can do this as well to taste and then hit OK. Once you have done that, we are going to start playing with our A and B colors. So you're going to select now all of the channels. So all of them are in blue colors. You can see when I select one of them, it becomes blue. Uh, so I'm going to select lab so that all of them become selected. And one more time, I'm going to press Command M to bring my curves up. This time, I'm going to select my A channel, and I'm going to change uh, the curve to be uh, like you can see that this curve, I am maintaining the same curve that I had before, and I'm changing by the same amount the bottom and the top. That's important because that's going to increase the saturation of those colors. Uh, in the A channel, of course, green and red. In the B color, yellow and blue. So if I actually do this, you can see I turn the image blue. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to increase the saturation of both blue and yellow colors by the same amount. And there you go and hit OK. And so that, of course, has much better saturation in the colors. It looks more attractive already. And that's all we need to do with this. We're going to change the image mode back to RGB. You can see that our channels have changed also. And we're going to select back to our layers. We're going to double click on our layer here, hit OK. And so that got rid of our background layer, transformed it in a traditional layer. And by holding Option key and dragging up, we're duplicating our layer. This is going to be important because we can then tone down any effects that we apply to the upper layer by reducing the opacity. Okay, so in the upper layer that we have selected, we're going to use the burning and dodging tools. First, burning. So we're going to burn the parts that we feel like need to be darker. As you can see, I have selected a 600 pixel brush with a range of midtones, exposure at 100% for right now. And of course, you would change this depending on the image that you're acting on. But I'm going to make some things in this image look darker and some things in the image look lighter, just to direct the eye a little bit more. All right, I'm going to do now dodging. And again, I'm not doing this like specifically very carefully for the image. I'm just like trying to be uh, quick about this. And as you can see, it did a lot of effect here because I have my highlights selected. 
So I'm going to go back a little bit and select here my midtone so that I am actually affecting only the midtones of my image. And that, of course, looks a lot better, as you can see. So I'm making anything that I want in this image to be lighter, I'm making it lighter just by painting. Pretty much the purpose of this is bringing up some more contrast, but it's more selective. So I'm darkening certain areas of the image and then I'm lightening some, some areas of the image. Now I'm going to select the highlights. And again, this tool it's, it does a lot with very little. So be very careful when you're using that with highlights. Of course, you can change the exposure of the tool, but also since you duplicated the layer, you can also just reduce the opacity to reduce the effect overall. Great, great stuff. And then finally, what we're going to do is add our filters and vignettes. So come here to adjustment layer, select filter. So photo filter. I'm going to use a warming filter here with a little bit more of density. And then just close it up. And then again, another adjustment layer, this time with a gradient. And this gradient is going to be, if you click here on gradient, you're going to select the gradient that you want. I'm going to be using a black gradient that goes from black to transparent. And then hit OK. I'm not going to be using a linear one. I'm going to be using a radial reversed one so that it's traditional vignette burning and making the corners darker. And then we're going to adjust the scale of the effect. Of course, you can also, by clicking and dragging, you can move the center of the effect for more dramatic effect. And then hit OK. And so we can reduce the opacity of both of those effects as we need it. Very cool. And as you can see, of course, this image looks a lot better already, more attractive than just our original image. And so we're going to hit here the history panel just to look at uh, the before and after image. So this is before, this is after, this is before, and this is after. Great. So all we're going to do is uh, practice with one, one, one more image in a kind of fast paced uh, way now that we know the techniques. So let's go ahead and close this one. I'm not going to save it. I have another image here and I'm going to go a little bit faster because now you should know all the techniques from this point on. First thing I'm going to do is bring up my curves and select the dark point, the light point. And of course, something that should be gray. That's it. Let me get rid of some problem areas here in my image, like this balls here that I don't really like. Then I'm going to change to my mode of lab, lab color mode that changes lightness A and B channels. And by selecting my lightness channel, I'm going to reduce my noise first. I'm going to hit OK. Second, I'm going to bring up my curves once again to increase overall contrast. And then I'm going to sharpen overall my image here. That's cool. Lab one more time so that when I bring up my curves pane, I can select my channels here. And in this case, I'm going to do something different. Uh, a little bit more exciting to, to bring a little bit more life to this image. As you can see, this image only has pretty much blue. It doesn't have a lot of red and green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pencil here and draw a line here at the very middle. So that pretty much says I am reducing all the contrast in the A channel, which is green and red. Uh, so nothing is green and nothing is red anymore. If I do this line here at the top, you can see that everything becomes red. And if I do it at the bottom, everything becomes green. So by doing it in the middle, nothing is green and nothing is red. That is in the channel A. In the channel B, if I do the same here at the top, everything is yellow. And if I do it at the bottom, everything is blue. 
And if I do it right in the middle, nothing is yellow and nothing is blue, effectively making my image completely grayscale. But that's not what I want. What I want is the blue to actually show up. And so if I actually change here to my curves one more time and I click while being on top of the image, I can see that I get a pointer right here that is telling me where in the curve uh, this part of the image is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make everything around here is going to be 50% gray. But when I get here, I'm going to affect that and then gray after that. So that effectively I am preserving and of course also increasing the saturation of the blues in the sky. And that's pretty much okay. Of course you can go ahead and play with those effects uh, as, you, as you want. That's looking fantastic. So let's go ahead and go back to our mode RGB. Now we're gonna select our burning tool to actually burn some things, uh, especially the darker parts on the clouds and things like that. Uh, making sure the darker areas are really nice and dark. And then go ahead and select our dodging tool, first with midtones and uh, increasing that contrast in the areas that need it most, especially here around the tree, for example, would be nice. And then go ahead and do the highlights, very sensitive. And there you go. And there you have it. Pretty, pretty cool. To finish up, we're gonna set here layer Spain and we are going to add our filter. So photo filter. I'm gonna do a magenta this time. So nice magenta effect there. And then another adjustment layer for our vignette. One more time, creating vignette. Instead of linear radial, reversed and adjust it to taste. okay you can adjust the opacity of both the effects to make it exactly like you want it uh, one of the things that you noticed of course probably is that I didn't duplicate my background layer and so now I can't really tone down the effect on the burning and dodging and so of course as you get more comfortable with the different techniques you can start doing exactly what you want sometimes duplicating your layers sometimes you just know what you're going to be doing so you have more control of the different tools and so uh, you don't need to be duplicating layers as much um, so uh, that's the technique i hope that you enjoy it i hope that uh, you're going to be taking your images to the next level making them more professional and getting rave reviews from all your family and friends about your images so hopefully uh, this has been great. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to make them be below in the YouTube uh, channel boxes for comments, or you can contact us at mercados.com. Again, my name is Alex Centeno. Thank you so, so much for watching. Bye-bye.